So when you start sewing your pattern, what you have to do is, the very first thing that you have to do is to sew the shoulders. So this is the right side of the fabric. This is the back piece of my shirt and this is the front piece of my shirt. As you can see, it has a deeper neckline. So the very first thing is that I'll sew the shoulders. You match from this end and then you will sew at the designated seam allowance, whatever that is in your case. So let me start sewing. I've sewed my shoulder. I'll do the same with the other shoulder. And then we'll finish the neckline with the bias strip that we made. Now both my shoulders are attached and this is my neckline now. Okay, now I'll turn the right side outside. So this is how it looks. Okay, now we have to finish this neckline with the bias strip. Now this is the bias strip that I'm using. And this is the very first time that you're going to be using uh, you're going to be working on the right side of the fabric. Whenever you are sewing, you are always sewing on the wrong side of the fabric. But when it comes to the uh, neckline finishing, you do it from the right side of the fabric. This is your neckline. This is what it looks like when it is undone. This is my shoulder seam. So you'll start from one shoulder seam. This is the right side of the bias strip, pretty side of the fabric. And this is the pretty side of the fabric. This is the wrong side. This is my shoulder seam. So I'll put the pretty side on each other and I'll fold it just a little. What you can do is you can start anywhere uh, in the middle of the back neckline as well, at the back of the neckline as well. And now you'll sew this at quarter inch seam allowance. If you have uh, if your seam allowance is more, then you'll definitely do that. Now, one very important thing is that you have to make sure you're not stretching your bias strip or your shirt fabric, nothing at all. Because bias strip itself is very stretchy in nature, so you don't have to stretch it. If you will stretch it, then you'll have problem with the finishing of the neckline. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that this edge is matched with this edge. That's all I'm doing. It might appear in the video that I'm stretching the fabric, but I'm not stretching the fabric. I'll just guide the fabric in machine. And that's it. Again, if you're not sure that you're sewing on a quarter inch seam allowance, you can draw a line. This will go inside so you can even use a pencil. So I'll start with a reverse stitch to overlock it and then I'll keep sewing with the regular stitch. When you have to turn your fabric, you don't have to stretch it. Just make sure that your needle is down and you guide your fabric in the machine and you do it little by little. You do it all the way across. I'm not stre stretching it, I'm just matching the edges. Since it's a curve, so you have to go little by little. When you get to the shoulder seam, you can open the seam allowance and distribute it like so so that one piece is here and one piece is there in this way it will be very very evenly distributed and you won't feel a bulk when you'll wear it since I'm using a thicker fabric that's why it's so bulky over here but obviously if you'll be using a regular cotton it wouldn't be that thick when you get to the end this was the starting point you just overlap just a little bit for a couple of stitches and overlock it I mean backstitch it so that it's overlocked then you cut the extra strip 
like so. Now what you have to do is, the first important thing was that you don't have to stretch the strip. The second important thing that you have to do is, you have to make these cuts so that it turns out very beautifully. And there is no specific um, distance that has to be in between them. You just have to make sure that you are making some cuts. And these cuts, by the way, you have to make sure that you're not cutting the stitch line. You're just ma making some cuts so that it turns out beautifully outside. So I've made these cuts all the way across like this. It's not on the stitch line but very close to the stitch line. This is what your neckline looks like right now. And this is your seam allowance. This is your seam allowance. All this. Now you have to iron it in this way. I'll go offline and do it but that's what you have to do it. You have to make sure that all this thing is towards the bias strip I hope I am in camera. I'll repeat it. This all seam allowance that you made the cuts on, you have to make sure that both these layer of fabric are towards the bias strip. So if I turn it at the back, it has to be ironed in this way. It shouldn't be over here, okay, on the bodice. It has to be towards this side, okay? And then you iron it. So I'm gonna go and iron it and then I'll tell you what to do next. I have ironed it and it looks very neat because I didn't stretch it and I made the cuts. Now what you have to do is, see all the seam allowances towards the bias strip, okay? Both layers. N now what you have to do is you have to fold it one more time like this, okay? So this thing, the seam allowance, it's hidden inside like so. And then you have to stitch from the right side. I showed you from the wrong side so that you know what I'm, t uh, I'm telling you. Now what you have to do is you have to sew right here, right on the bias strip, but very close to this where these two are joining. So right here, very close to it. And for doing that, I have already told you that all machines have an option to remove this drawer. And this is called freedom sewing. You put this, uh, you put your project into it, and then you do it like this, making sure that this all fabric is towards the bias strip. And then I always recommend everyone to start from the back. Before sewing, please make sure that you have made cuts. If you will not make the cuts, then the finishing will not be neat and nice. Let me make sure that I'm on camera. And again, while doing this step, you want to make sure that you're not stretching the bias strip. I'm only folding that inside, but I'm not stretching it. I'm sewing very close to the, to this seam, but not on the body. So I didn't do the reverse stitch or the back stitch in the beginning because I had to come back to the same point and do that stitching. Now what you have to do is you have to cut all this extra fabric. If you have any, you have to cut that fabric very close to the stitch line. Once I'll cut it all the way across, then what I'll do is this is what the neckline looks like right now. Then what you do is you have to fold this thing inside again. All this thing inside, all the way across, and you would want to iron this. So one more time, I'm taking all this bias strip inside, like so, and I'm going to iron it. Okay, so that nothing is visible over here. But first you have to cut this extra fabric, otherwise it will get too bulky. All right, so I have ironed my neckline. Now see how neat it is. When I lay it flat, this is how neat it is. Now if you would have stretched the bias strip or if you wouldn't have made the cuts that I told you to make, then it will not 
have such a neat finish. Now, a student of mine asked that, why uh, can we not keep this wider? You can keep the bias strip the seam allowance that we kept quarter inch uh, up to half an inch, but not more than that. If you'll keep it more than that, you will have a thicker base over here that looks very nice for the front neckline, but you will have the same base for the back as well. And if you keep it, let's say, at one inch at the back, it doesn't look that nice. So that is why we don't keep it more. So if you have to make it, um, make a neckline that has a wider base inside, then you have to use the interfacing technique. Okay, so now what you have to do is that once you have ironed it, if you'll iron it, it will be easier for you to handle this thing. Now you have to sew at quarter inch seam allowance. This is what it looks like from inside. Okay, so you can hand sew it if you want to, or you can uh, machine sew it in the same way you sewed this thing with a regular stitch at quarter inch seam allowance. So it's up to you. If you're gonna hand sew this thing, it will look very neat and nice. So you have to sew at quarter inch seam allowance. Now some uh, sometimes people will ask me that why don't we see from the uh, sew from the back? That's because if you will sew from the back, you might not have a very curved line from the front. So you have to make sure, you can do it from the back as well, because this thing is very neat and nice, uh, but if you will do it from the back, there are chances that your curve from the front is not that neat and nice. So if you're not sure that you can sew at quarter inch seam allowance, then what you can do is you can make a, um, you can draw from the marking chalk all the way across, or you can just hand sew it feeling the fabric and if you can see from the back I'm I'm sewing all this together see I'm sewing here and again when I started it I didn't backstitch that's because I knew I had to uh, come on the same point and oh, backstitch it at that time that's why I didn't backstitch at the first place so now your neckline is ready the bias strip, it works best, best with the curves, okay? So when I'm gonna iron it, it will lie flat, very flat. This is how it looks, okay? Now once you have done, the first step was to sew the shoulder, both the shoulders, then complete the neckline, and that is the second step. The third step is to hem your sleeves and then attach it to the, uh, to your kurti. So, now I'm going to attach the sleeves to my kurti and then I'll uh, sew the side seams and then my dress will be ready.